We're sitting in Central Park with Priest, Mike Mass, and Bob. Yep. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, can you introduce yourself or right. quickly? I'm Priest, Detroit artist, New York artist, overseas artist, and everything. Been at this shit since '97, baby. <laughs> Yo, it's the kid Mike Mass, originally from the BX, moved to Tampa, rep Tampa, building Tampa from the ground up, hip hop wise and culture wise. You feel me? Light Kings, fully by Bo. Next album, yeah, you know I mean. I'm a Bo producer. Um, aspiring Pokemaster. Just out here trying to catch them all and get it popping, you know? Word up. Yeah. <laughs> all right, good. Yeah, so we, we all connected online and we just met in person. Like, we, we met yesterday, we met today. So, uh, how do you like um, like connecting with other artists from other countries and, and networking? How important is it uh, like nowadays for an artist? Networking is a vital tool in order to progress. So, that's... That's an easy one. Shit, I'm coming to Poland. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, networking is vital, man. Networking is what you need to build your brand and, you know, to just keep moving and to just keep pushing your product. Kind of like Dope Game, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> Very similar. Yeah, um, networking outside the country is probably the one thing that a lot of domestic artists aren't doing enough of. Um, they don't understand that your fan base doesn't just have to be in America. Like, there's billions of people in the world, you know what I'm saying? If they don't fuck with you where you're at, like, somewhere they fuck, they fuck with you, you know what I'm saying? So, like, for me, it's more like, yo, like, if you're working with people, like, I produce, I make beats. I can very well produce all my own shit, but how is that going to help me in any way to network with anyone? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I have a producer I'm working with, that producer is going to now promote my music for me. And that's the value of working with, you know, people from other places. As long as you talk to them, and you actually communicate with them and hopefully, you know, it, meet them in person. Like, I'm, I'm getting sick of this whole YouTube beats shit that's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, this shit is fucking up the game. And now you have more than three or four niggas rhyming over the same beat, putting out the same beat. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's just really sad, dog. Like, I wish that era would die and that the producers and MCs would get more of a, a camaraderie like like we used to have back in the like, day. Like, mm -hmm. like how DJs and MCs are supposed to have camaraderie, which, you know, B.O.'s a DJ and a producer. I rap. So it's like, it's a perfect, it's a perfect blend and shit. Yo. Oh, what we talking about? Networking? Yeah, networking man. Yeah, do that shit, week. man. Do it. <laughs> Kill it, bro. Network. That's the whole reason that uh, I even have any kind of name. It's because the first couple years that I decided to take music seriously, that was my only focus was being everywhere and making sure everybody knew who I was. So now you go to Tampa, you'll go to certain places and see my name on the menu. Or I walk, me and Michael walk in there and know every owner for five blocks you know what i'm saying go in that bitch get free drinks all kinds of stuff and it's because we show love and we network and they understand what we bring to the table and we understand what they bring to the table yeah and what would you say is like the hardest thing in being an independent artist right now because you all come from different backgrounds you have like different stories how you started in hip-hop uh, and like and, and how long you've been doing it and uh, what is the biggest struggle right now the biggest struggle right now is uh, funding. Um, people want to utilize you for your talents and for your draw, you know, but they don't necessarily understand the value that comes with that. Um, what we're trying to do right now more is, is just restructure the way we sell ourselves to possible investors so that they can understand fully what they're putting their money into. Not just a guy making rap songs, but a guy who's actually pushing forward the entire culture of a city that has never had that culture mm -hmm. before. You know what I'm saying? So like Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg, Clearwater area is like a really, really budding music you know, like central place in Florida, you know what I mean? Because Florida's a big state, you know? And from what I've heard, and this is just me, from what I've heard, Tampa Bay has by far the best musicians in the state of Florida, like hands down. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's, it's important. The hardest thing for us right now is uh, going where people want us to be at without them giving us what we need to get there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if you want me there, you need to give me what I need to, to get there. So a lot of times, sometimes we'll just take the sacrifice and, and pay our way, and then it'll end up paying off in the end. But you can't keep doing that. We're just going, you know what I'm saying? You're fucking going broke. Yeah. Oh, I, I got do. I got another thing. Another difficult thing is uh, making money off music. There's so much background paperwork. There's so much fucking research you got to do. There's so much shit you got to keep up with. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's tough. That to balance that and being creative at the same time is is a challenge. Um, but we're on it. You know, we do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The DIY age, I always say hip hop is 90% uh, music. No, I mean 10% uh, music and 90% presentation. Yep. So everything you have to build is from the ground up, like bottom line. 
you have to you have to first of all find your sound and your individuality as an artist and then you have to actually convey that to people and move it on and then move those boundaries too and unfortunately a lot of your music is not really going to be where you are like i'm in new york city right now and yeah, this place has a way of putting lipstick on you, shining you, and fucking you in the ass. Yep. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. So you got to go out to other places. You got to put the money up. You got to put the bread up. And you got to travel. But that's the that's the beautiful payoff for music. Because in the very end, once you where you are, where you want to be as an independent artist, you get the opportunity to travel. You get to make your money. You get to interact with fans and talk to them. And as an incentive, you get total full reign control. Yep. You know, nobody's putting their dick on your head. Nobody's saying you got to sell a certain amount of... Uh, albums, nobody's saying they're locking you in the contracts, it's on you. And that's the beautiful shit because in the end, and ultimately just as human beings, I would feel more comfortable if I'm going to fail and fail alone. I don't want to fail with somebody else's knee in my back. Yeah. Dictating um, my rise, if it's meteoric or if it's short-lived. That, you know, this is entirely up to me. So if it falters, I have myself to blame, but I had a damn good time doing it, man. That's yeah. it. Yeah, and you just dropped, actually, we just dropped like, uh, a like that, single yeah. like that on the biggest Polish hip-hop label. And uh, how do you feel about it? <laughs> shit is amazing, dog. Like, my shit in Poland and people watching my shit, yo, like, people in Tampa are supporting me so much, bro, because I'm doing, I'm really doing what no hip-hop artist from Tampa has done before, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just trying to live up to the hype, you know? It's, it's not hard for me, you know what I'm saying? But... Right. It's just an interesting position to be in, responsibility-wise, to be representing an entire city musically. You know what I'm saying? Like, I fucking love it. And, you know, we gonna, I mean, we're going to do that shit. Like, yeah. yeah that's my mind. <laughs> so. Yeah, and you also got a chance to be in, on Sway in the morning. Bruh. So, how, how was that experience? Sway was crazy, yo. Like, the video's up. Uh, actually, that video that's out is actually the second time I rapped on Sway. And I actually rapped before he put me in the Friday Cypher. Um, and that's how he, he ended up asking me to stay, you know, to, to, to hang out so that I could stay later. And um, I got a huge, great reaction from Heather B. I got a huge, great reaction from Sway. And DJ Wonder, who's a DJ for Sway in the morning, actually hit me up personally and was like, yo, we need to work, you know, when you're out here. So, unfortunately, he's out of town. I believe he's in Detroit also. <laughs> so, shout out to DJ Wonder. Um, hopefully, we get to do some, some work real soon. He's been producing for a lot of cats. A lot of people don't know he makes beats. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah, that's dope. And, um, and about, uh, we were talking about your beginnings earlier, how, how you were starting out in Detroit and uh, you were at the Cyphers with Proof and Eminem, right? So can you go back to those times? Well, I was a little kid and just like, you know, you hear these names and you see them and you just like, you don't, these names don't mean nothing to you when you're young. I was like 11 or 12, so it wasn't like, you know, like specifically like, oh, you just get to meet them and stuff like that. But you are in an area where you, you see the talent and you, you see the people and you feel the vibes and stuff like that. Um, but then it came from that, then I was like, I'm a guitar player also, and it just jumped into that. And I've done some stuff which I actually, by contract, can't say what I've done, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> as far as guitar, but I mean, just that whole journey, like this started in 1997, I'm 11 or 12 years old. And to, to have that kind of etiquette and apply those same rules almost 20 damn years later, to finding your sound, it started off fast, then it jumped East Coast, then it switched <laughs> up, and then it just got personal and poetic. So. I mean, that's that's the journey musically. I mean, that's how you trace the roots of it. But I've been at this 20 years. It's not, no, I started six months ago with beats from YouTube, like this nigga was saying, and it's true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, it's like really cultivating your skills and, and understanding who you are as an artist and, and using inspiration without biting and, and dedicating yourself to the sound without compromising and just saying, like, ultimately, this is fucking me. Like, what? That's all I got, you know? Yeah. Expression and, and self-expression, so. That's my yeah. And so far, what has been your, uh, like, the most epic hip-hop moment of your journey, like, from the beginning up till now? When I performed in Paris, I gotta say that was it. That was it. And it wasn't even, like, it was so crazy because it was, like, it was some people there, but then it was a lot of people there. And I did the show, I did, like, a little 20-minute set or whatever, but then somebody asked me for my autograph, and you had, you know, you had women there that was trying to be groupies, but you couldn't speak the language, so that's a wrap. <laughs> You know, but it was just a whole experience because I had never been to Paris and that changed my life, man. And then I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to get ghetto and get shout outs to my man Yassine and Newberg and um, Justice and Victor, like people who like took care of me and made and put these things together. And I shot a video out there. That was a, that was a serious highlight because I got to do it on my own. I traveled on my own. I almost lost my apartment going out there. My lights was almost cut out going out there, but fuck it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're getting it, man. So, I might give you one. Yeah. 
Yo, my greatest, most epic hip hop moment was when um, I went to uh, a show at Janice Landing, which is in St. Pete. And um, well, I mean, I got a lot of epic hip hop moments, but this is one yeah. that I, I, I vividly remember. Um, I went backstage because Dynasty was performing. Shout out to Dynasty. Um, and Big Daddy Kane was performing. And Big Daddy Kane was backstage. Mm. And Big Daddy Kane was there just chilling. And I'm just like, yo, like, so you're gonna spit some bars? Like, what's up? You know? Big Daddy Kane spit, bruh. And he's fucking nice. And we ciphered with Big Daddy <laughs> Kane that day. Me, Dynasty, and Kane ciphered, bruh. I also ciphered uh, with Ski Beats in Ebor City, which was fucking And crazy. Ski Beats was rapping, right? Ski Beats can rap, dog. Yeah. He can rap, dog. He started out rapping, like, in Original Flavor. He got that old Camp Low flow. He be yeah. killing that shit. <laughs> Craziest hip hop moment, B.O. And most epic moment for you? Um, probably A3C. I, I, did, yeah. a, I did a beat battle in A3C. I got second, which I thought like was just losing, but apparently like that shit was a big deal because it took a team to beat me and I washed everybody that I went against. So then uh, some of the judges were some, some great producers like Needles and the Olympics and the freshmen and all of that, and M16. And uh, I played a, one particular beat, and for the entire weekend, every time I saw them, they had me play that beat again. For them. <laughs> so, Damn, um, yeah, that, that's probably it right there. Yeah. I wasn't there for that. I wish I was. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, we're about to wrap up, uh, wrap up uh, in, in a minute because we got to go to the airport to catch the flight back to Poland. Straight up. <laughs> so if you got some last words for the fans in Poland and the people that are just uh, right now getting to know your music and, and you as an artist. For the Poland people, I'm coming out at a certain point. So that's going to happen. Yeah, listen, for that. yeah, listen to my shit, man. Quit playing. All right. But for the people who know my music specifically, it's just like I just dropped this last album, Art of Urban Warfare. I dropped that last year. And that was that one was that was that was a career definer because that actually got me a lot of attention, a lot of notoriety. So I mean, if you listen to Priest's music, um, you'll hear some aggression, you'll hear some yelling, you'll hear some soft shit, you'll hear some conscious shit, you'll hear me talking about mamas, daddies, black people, whatever, man. Just I, I do a lot of a lot of um, situational, circumstantial music, you know, just like with just with a lot of concepts you know and um i don't have a title for my next album but you'll hear about it when it comes out so just keep looking out request it fan page is there soundcloud by the way soundcloud soundcloud.com slash priest music that's the plug word you know so yeah look out for me Flex. light kings fully produced by bob that's coming out mad soon like mad soon um Look out for me in uh in 12 joint, you know what I'm saying? Like that. That's out. Um The Light Kings music video is about to come out. Shout out to fucking Miles Cable. Um yeah. produced by BOB. That's a hell of a video. I can't wait to drop it. Um the uh, official limited release Mike Mass and BO 50 shirts. Um we're going to do a one uh, a one-time issue of 50 shirts each one my shirt and one his I gotta have one it's gonna come in special packaging special marketing and everything $28 a piece go ahead and grab one up we're gonna put the pre-sales up very soon um, what else what else what else what else man I got a lot of shit popping man I got, I got beats yeah, hit me up for some beats soundcloud.com slash Mike Mass Hip Hop um, shit there's so much I got uh, wine and rhyme motherfuckers if you ever come to Tampa on the first Monday, we do an event called Wine and Rhyme, and you've never been to or seen anything like it. I guarantee you. It's free to attend. Live, com live comedy, live hip-hop, acoustic folk. We have bands. We have live art. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's amazing. So, yeah. Look out for me, Mike Mass. I'm in your city. I'm trying to come to Poland. If a thousand motherfuckers watch my video, then a thousand motherfuckers pay a dollar for the band camp. If a thousand motherfuckers pay a dollar for the band camp, then guess what? I'm going to Poland. So, let me know if you motherfuckers want to pay me a dollar for my song. I'll be happy to take your dollar. And come to Poland. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You give me a dollar and then I get to go to Poland. Like that's that's a good trade right there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. B.O. Tell them about it. Um just I guess follow me on Instagram, yp.beyobe. -E. And uh I mean you can pretty much figure it all out from there, dog. I do everything. Way too much to talk about. I pay I'm a fucking producer, DJ, comma, ETC period. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just hit me up, man. We'll talk. That's it. So, so thanks, Lyle, for the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never done something like this. 
Mark bro. Mark Natalia, aka yeah. Mark That's Natty, it, aka M Nizzle, aka. <laughs> and shout out to Mr. Natalia, <laughs> aka Natty, Natty Ice right here. here. And shout out to the brother right here, man. Yo, for always being supportive <laughs> yeah. and always Yo, listening bad. out and, and just being a fan and even coming out here and letting me rock, man. Like, shout out to my man right here. Shout out to Cassius King, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, shout out to, to Apathy and the Demigods. Um, shout out to Self Titled. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to DJ Sandman. Shout out to DJ Casper, 100%. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, Samurai Shotgun, Gatsby. Motherfucking Betty Doll killed it this weekend at the show. Shout out to Betty Doll, you know what I'm saying? Tony Hands, Vern Sr., Ari Kai. Just gotta give my shout outs. <laughs> Hayes Allah, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't rock supreme. He doesn't. And that's it. Young. Yeah. The audio is good. Uh, it didn't stop recording.